face on my on my terms. Here we okay. go. Okay, we all good. We are live. Okay, <laughs> Hotep family, happy family. Thank you for coming out on this Saturday. Um, please excuse me because I didn't get to the barbershop and I wasn't able to get my hair cut and shaving the whole thing. So I just want to say, excuse me, but what we're going to do is tonight we're going to talk about money. Uh, we have a powerful, powerful presenter um, right now, right here, and we're going to share some information and knowledge, and we're going to open up the floor because we want him to expose you to economics in a way that has never been shown before. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce the brother. The brother's is, name is Philip, and I want him to share with you who he is. And then we're going to go into detail on his work and how powerful it is for the African community to this day. So, Brother Philip, tell us who you are. Give us your introduction. Oh, and my I, introduction. I got to yeah. do it. Oh, yes, no, you got to do it. Because what happens is we leave things out. Oh, man. So what do you want us to know about you? I feel like, what's that What's that dude? Uh, you know, uh, Steve Martin, you know, I was born a poor white child. You know, <laughs> yeah, right, so I'll it. start there, you know, or do I need okay. to go that far back? You know, yeah. so. <laughs> um, Come on, tell us yeah, who you where are. Where do you want me to start? Okay. You can uh, have fun. I am uh, Reverend Philippe Chuck Matthews. Uh, I'm the host of the Philippe Matthews Show. Uh, I've authored 17 books. Uh, my latest book is, well, that's not my latest book, but Digital Nomics, which is what we're going to be talking about today uh, with Brother Charles. Uh, I have a ministry first frequency of oneness. Um, I run a virtual comedic wisdom school with all of the best minds uh, in the world from James Smalls, to Professor Kaba, Oba de Chakra, uh, Leonard Jeffries. Uh, and that's just been an absolute blast. Um, I am known uh, by the community as a metaphysical Morpheus because I unlock people from the matrix and show them how to be their own Neo. Uh, I think that's enough. Otherwise, it's going to start. I'm, I'm going to start really feeling myself, Charles. That's all. OK, good. OK, I'm going to I'm going to ask you a question um, in the process of doing research. Um, there was something that I noticed that I picked up on. <laughs> there was something that you promised your mother. Oh, boy. A long time ago. Can you just touch on that real quick before don't we go start, deep don't get, You know, I cry a lot. Don't get me emotional. No, don't, don't cry. We just, I just want people to share that with oh, you. I want know, to see, that's humanity. That, that's that ambush stuff. <laughs> Come on, man. You're doing this in front of family? Come on, brother. Because I want the youngsters on the on the broadcast to hear what you have to say. I Okay, so, let, so before I, in process of answering that, let me give you just a bit of backstory to get, that got, got me to those promises that I made my mother. So my mom was uh, given uh, 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 four months to live and she started I'm from Chicago and she started taking me and my sister to uh, a, 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 a church called Christ Universal Temple, headed by the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman, most famous uh, metaphysical minister in the world uh, still. And this is when they were on 86 and Lafayette. Shout out to Chi-Town, if you know that area. And um uh, I, you know, that's where I met Reverend Ike and, and, and so many people and, and, and money, money, making money. Right. And, uh, so, so my, my mom really, I mean, it was, it was a deep dive. And so it was uh Sunday, Sunday school, Wednesday night service, everything. And I was just soaking up these universal principles, but more importantly, I saw all of these beautiful, wealthy, black people. Okay. And it, it, it had a different smell than than living in the ghetto. You know, it, it had a different smell. And it was like, wow, this is great. But I'm 10 years old. And so uh, as a result, uh, my mom ended up living four years. So she died when I was 14 in my arms. And I uh, made three promises to her because we came from abject poverty. My mother was illiterate. My father was was illiterate. He was a plumber. Uh, and uh, I had to drop out of the sixth grade to take care of her. Uh, and so I made those three promises. One, I will never uh, get involved in drugs uh, of any kind. I will not get involved in gang activity, number three. Uh, and I will do something to make you proud. Um, and that's when the struggle began because I came up at a time when there were no choices uh, other than to uh, uh, sell drugs or get in or, or, or anesthetize yourself with a drug. Uh, and, and so, so it was very, a very difficult journey. Uh, but I had these foundational principles that along the way I began to, uh, I was forced to be reintroduced to them. 
And, you know, when she died, uh, my father, they were divorced when I was six. Father came back into my life and he died two months later, literally dropped dead in front of me. Wow. So now I'm parentless. I'm 14. It's my sister and I. And we're on welfare. We're living in a, a, a one room shack uh, on uh, 45th and Lake Park in Chicago, which now is nothing but million dollar condos. It wasn't that before. Um, and I had a, I got a job. I was 15. I got a job working for Kentucky Fried Chicken as a cook. So that's my beginnings. Right. OK, good. I just wanted people to know who you are and the humanity part and knowing that this is a brother just like you and I, mm -hmm. and knowing that to go from where you went to to where you are now, it's possible. It's possible. Facts. So what I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to get into some questions now. Um, uh oh Okay, got it. So now that we got the human part and the fun part out. So um, I have a list of questions here. I'm going to try to stick to them. But um, first question, number one, because of what's happening now, um, with the situation that's going on now with the COVID virus, okay? Mm -hmm. How has the COVID virus and the pandemic influenced the future of making money? <clears throat> For me, this is probably, and I know some people are gonna probably think I'm still drinking because I stopped drinking a, long, a while ago, but I'm <laughs> serious right now when I'm gonna say this. This is probably the best thing that could have happened to us. Wow. <laughs> and, and the reason is, and, and the reasons are multiplicable. It's not just one reason, it's multiple reasons. The first reason is that we are stuck in the house and we have to do something. And hopefully what we are doing is learning how not to do what we were doing prior to, and that is being busy and doing nothing. Uh, hopefully, second, it's about reading and saying, how do I reinvent myself? Wow. Uh, in order to acquire something that you've never had, you must become someone you've never been. Well, now you have the time to do it. You were struggling prior to COVID-19. Uh, and so you're probably struggling a hell of a lot more right now with a level of uncertainty that you didn't even have before. So now is the time for you to take this time to do this kind of stuff. Watch these great experts, read these books. Who do you wish to become? What is your reinvention? What does it look like? Now, the third thing is, and I get very, uh, uh, I guess the term would be political, I don't know, but in terms of my work, uh, one of my uh, uh, great teachers, we just had him on my show, Dr. William A. Smith, who uh, did uh, the research and coined the phrase racial battle fatigue with him and Dr. Tommy J. Curry. The, the third thing that's the best thing that ever happened to us is that we are forced now not to be around white people. And so there's a racial battle fatigue that happens when we are in proximity to a constant proximity to what I call in my uh, uh, metaphysical framework, second frequency people. We're first frequency. We are gods and goddesses uh, created by the creator first, chosen first, first idea, first gestation, first concept of the creator. When the creator says, I want to feel and see myself and experience myself in, in, in physical carbon form. The blackest of the black, black, the most beautiful was created, and that was right. us, the Africans. So we're first the frequency. There's an original signal that we have. With this second frequency uh, uh, coming out of the uh, out of the cave, uh, their job, their goal uh, was to make us forget we are first frequency people. And that caused us, particularly on this soil, to become what we call third and fourth, the Negro and the nigger. And when I was coming up, I was because I didn't have access to academia. I didn't have access to economics. So I couldn't be a good Negro and go to school and go to church and do all of the things that good assimilated, uh, using the word of Dr. from Dr. Obadishaka, good assimilated Negroes do. Right. I was that nothing ass nigga on the street. Right. And so, you know, I had to survive by any means necessary. And so this is something that when I talk about it, it resonates with people because I tell my family all the time. And when I say my family, I'm talking about the community at large, that nothing is wrong with us. Something happened to us. So, so this trauma uh, that that uh, we call uh, in in the uh, ancestral realm, Maafa, well, we're still in it. 
and I just and how is that? I lost the host, but the, the 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 guest is still here. So I'm here. I'm still here with you, family. So we we are in this uh, 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 racial battle fatigue. I call it the hidden signal. This second frequency signal that uh, is killing us by proximity, uh, and it is also killing us uh, literally uh, when we're dealing with what we're dealing with right now with Ahmad uh, Aubrey. Uh, what we're dealing with right now with uh, 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 Brother uh, uh, George Floyd. Right. The, this second frequency is designed to destroy us, to kill us, to stop us reaching our potential. But the process is it has embedded uh, deep-seated, decontextualized trauma that causes us not to be able to think and sequence our way out of the situation that we're in, prim particularly financially. You and I were talking on the phone, talking about literacy, financial literacy and having to do the work. I'm in 100% agreement with you, but what happens is, is that that trauma cuts us off from being able to think straight. And it causes us to have a level of shame, a toxic shame where we don't wanna get it wrong, but we do because we can't think straight, we can't sequence. There's a part of the brain that breaks down when it is uh, uh, under uh, uh, a high level of stress, but particularly in our case, a continuous level of stress. It's called the VMPFC, ventral medial prefrontal cortex. It gives us our locus of control. We feel like we can control something, we can handle it. We've got a strong VMPFC. We've got a strong ability to be able to solve our problems, handle our problems and meet our needs. When you are bombarded from childhood, cradle to the grave with these second frequency uh, 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 issues, and now you're navigating between the false racial constructs of a Negro or a nigger, because that ain't who we are. Right, right. But we have to operate within those false racial constructs, which makes us bipolar at best, and wonder why we're having mental illness issues. When that part of the brain breaks down, it makes sense that I will go and have another baby so I can get more welfare money. Right, right, right. So we can, it, it makes sense that if I'm going to get with Brother Charles and Brother Charles is going to teach me financial literacy, I'm I'm going to maybe hear it, but I'm not going to really absorb it, and I'm not going to apply it because I uh, there's something inside of me that is stopping me from getting past the go. Right. There, there. So I'm going to procrastinate. I'm and, and 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 by the way, I think it's meritorious that I need to address the family and and and, and tell us, what, tell them what what are these four traumas? There's four traumas that that are embedded in every black body, African and African American in the diaspora. The first one is genetic. Now you have heard from uh, uh, Dr. Joy DeGruy post-traumatic slave syndrome. Dr. Obed Ashaka talks about post-1968 hostile forces. There are three there are three memories that we need to look at, ancestral memory, genetic memory, and incarnate memory. Our ancestral memory uh, is where that trauma was stored from the Ma'afa. Uh, understanding the Akashic records, the law of conservation, that trauma is conserved. It doesn't go anywhere, it's, it's recorded. And so it is passed on ancestrally. Then whenever we come into uh, uh, our particular existence, we move into genetic uh, trauma or genetic memory, which is epigenetics, right? right? Now, the interesting thing is Dr. DeGruy was doing this work before the scientists had the name epigenetics. Right. So she was way ahead of her time in her research. So genetic memory goes back 14 generations, which is about 350 years. So that puts us smack dab in slavery, Jim Crow. So now we have the ancestral trauma of the Ma'afa. We have the trauma of, of, of uh, uh, chattel slavery, Jim Crow, so on and so forth. And of course, you know, in the Hoppy film, Dr. Jacqueline Battalore is in that film, and she teaches us about anti-miscegenation laws and what happened right. between 1664 right. and 1681. So now that's part of that genetic memory right. you see that is embedding that genetic trauma and then the the third uh type of memory is the incarnate memory that happens at the moment that we're born so we come here with uh our uh, genes uh, of trauma what's called dna tags but then once we're born we're born into this racial battle fatigue uh, signal and we're forced to choose between being a good negro and a, or, or or a nigger out here in, in these streets you know, right? Right. if i might be blunt Got it, right. So that trauma uh, comes up and it manifests as as 
the second level of trauma uh, from genetic trauma is decontextualized trauma. Decontextualized trauma is, or, or hazy trauma as it's called, is trauma that you don't have a time, a time date or time stamp on it. It's in right. you, but you can't trace back to when it was installed. Right. Now, if depending upon where you come from, if you're a black boy or a black girl, you might have multiple situations that traumatized you, that was imprinted in you, not including the genetic trauma you came here with. And so right. now when trauma is decontextualized, it just looks like personality. Wow. Right. That's just the way Chuck has always been. That's just wow. the way Philippe is when he gets upset. That's just the way mama so-and-so is when, she, when, when, you, when you say that word. It's personality. It's not the person, it's the personality and trauma has hijacked and mimics the personality. When Chuck and Philippe go outside and mix and mingle with the world, that personality becomes culture. OK, wow. so we got genetic trauma, decontextualized or hazy trauma. The third trauma is then the vicarious trauma. Vicarious trauma is I wake up uh, Memorial Day. I turn on my uh, computer. Uh, I go and check my uh, uh, Facebook and I see Brother George uh, Floyd. Right. I'm not there. I'm, I'm, I'm in Sacramento, California. I, I have never been uh, to Minneapolis, but what I see traumatizes me to the point where there's a racial battle fatigue that comes down on me that I'm not able to function that day. Right. I, I, gotta, I, I have to now lay in bed somewhere or sit down somewhere because I'm not believing what I'm seeing. I'm not there, but vicariously, I am traumatized. That vicarious trauma, and that's just one incident. We're still coming off of Ahmaud Aubrey, but we still right, have to right. go back. We got to go back to Sandra Bland. We got to go back to Eric Gardner. We got to go back to Trayvon Martin. All of that's vicarious trauma that builds up, stored, is conserved because energy can't be destroyed. It can only be changed, transformed, or transmuted. And so now all of the genetic trauma that I already have inside of me uh, is now uh, uh, going into a decontextualized area when I'm now vicariously traumatized by just sitting up in my own home and watching my family being murdered and killed and lynched. That creates the fourth trauma. The fourth trauma is the ghosting trauma. It's the trauma where we feel like something bad is always going to happen to us. Wow. Something is not right. And when we start to feel something is going to happen to us, something bad is going to happen to it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and so thereby it does. And so we start to not feel deserving of the very things that we ask and are trying to desire and manifest in our lives. And so we start to self-sabotage the good relationships, the good job, the good money. We don't spend our money correctly. We won't invest it. Why? Because ghosting trauma causes me to live in the here and right now. I got to survive. So I'm just living for the weekend. I'm going to turn it up. I'm not going to invest in the damn thing because guess what? As a, in my, With all of my trauma, I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. And so as a result, I'm going to do everything here and now. I went on a tangent, but I wanted to kind of set that foundation <laughs> for you, brother, so you understand that ain't nothing wrong with us. Got something it. Something happened to us, and it's still happening. And that thing is trauma. Okay. Um, quick question, and uh, just a little off. Um, du Bois' dual consciousness, do you think yes. that was a coping factor Yes. of dealing with this integration knowing that you have to have this to survive. Facts. Got it. Okay. Just Facts. want to make sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because yeah. frequency, when I think of, you know, when you say the Negro and the nigga, it's like, oh, you know, no, 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 no. See, this is, uh, it, it created, first of all, let's go back to the battle lore's work. White people were invented. Right. White people are American made. Now we know the European were messed up psychologically sociopathically and, 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 and uh, uh, prior to them landing uh, on this soil coming from the dark ages. So we know they perfected trauma uh, in the dark ages. They just brought that trauma and all of that learned uh, uh, trauma here. Before we can even talk about Battle Lore's work, we got to talk about what makes uh, a human being, a group of human beings say it's okay to come to another uh, land genocide and take the land. 
we don't even have that conversation. Right. So let's just talk about, okay, the 1664 to 1681, the invention of white people. Three laws came down in anti-messagination that got you and I on this conversation today. The first one is a person of African descent could not vote or run for office. The second is a person of African descent could not uh, own guns or gunpowder. So I couldn't protect my family. I couldn't right. eat. The third most insidious law, a person of African descent could not take any type of legal action against this new false designation of humanity called white people. Got it. So now the casual killing that, and this is a uh, hundred hundreds of years wow. before the forefathers were born, before the first meeting of Congress, before the U.S. Constitution. So Jeff Jeffers Jeffersons and all that they born into racial hate and animus. They're born into false sense of white privilege. Uh, when we look at white privilege, Dr. Peggy McIntosh, who talked about that back in 93, I believe, when white privilege is challenged, it creates white fragility. White fragility, when challenged, creates what Dr. Carol Anderson refers to as white rage. When they see black people aspiring in spite of what it is that we have been subjected to, it creates a white rage in them that causes them to do a Tulsa, Oklahoma, put a knee on our neck, shoot yeah. us and get away with it. And then when you look at those laws again, in, in, in terms of an ancestral uh, or historical uh, position, we're still there in many ways. The cops shoot us, they don't go, uh they they don't they don't go they don't get prison they don't get the death penalty they don't they they can just murder at will just like the anti messagination laws when they were uh, right. uh in place you know hundreds of years ago so here we are um dealing with this dual consciousness so how do i mitigate how do i circumvent i can't you know D uh, derek bell teaches us and dr Ch tommy j curry taught me about derek bell we can't fight racism. We have to circumvent it. As long as white people exist, racism um, will exist. Um, so as a result of that, now I have to figure out how do I maneuver? I can't go right. through it. I got to go around it, under it, and I got to deal with it. Some of us say, you know, you ever heard, you ever heard the term, uh, uh, if you can't beat them, what? Join them. You join right. them. So maybe if I can mimic and act and conform and constrict and assimilate and act like I am cool and accept. Maybe they'll accept me, right? Because I won't be ra I won't be racially profiled like a nigga. Got it. Got so it. I won't be that fourth frequency. I don't want to be that not, you know that nothing ass nigga on the street. I'm gonna be a good Negro. I'm gonna go along and get along. And you get this is where you get your situations with your Gail Kings and your Oprahs. When that kind of money comes into us, when that kind of academia comes into us. It's white male patriarchy that is shaping that narrative and shaping that wealth and shaping that uh, academia. And so we end up harming ourselves. Now, this is peer reviewed. This is not my opinion. It yeah. is my life, but it's not my opinion. Dr. William A. Smith has taught us the higher up in education a black man goes, the higher his morbidity rate. He dies sooner. He has more issues with his health. Why? Because he's closer to white male patriarchy, he's closer to whiteness and proximity. And the more money you make, as Biggie Smalls would say, more money, more problems. <laughs> okay. All right, more. great. Um, so because we're ahead, in a false racial construct, ahead. we're in a false <laughs> racial construct. So of course we're going to act like Gail and Oprah. Of course we're going to act like we're we're not in our right frame of mind. Got it. Got it. Ex excellent. Powerful, powerful piece. Um, I need everyone to make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our Instagram, make sure that you hit the like button and the share button and Facebook, make sure you're connected so that every time we have an event, you know firsthand what's going on. Um, Brother Philip, uh, let me tell you something. Your book, tell us about your book. There was one thing that fascinated me about your book was you broke it down into three sections. Mm -hmm. The first one is mine. Mm -hmm. Second one is, um, second one is, Help me out. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, you don't remember? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, just, you brought, it was, it was, it. It was just, okay, it was, uh, it was uh, mine. It has to be money. Mind, money, method. And method, yeah. Mind, like money, that. method. Tell, okay, break us down. Tell us about your book and why this book is very important and key right now to us in this 
COVID situation right so, now. So, so digital nomics. Um, I wrote this book because for the last 15, 20 years of being toxically exposed to second frequency Amu, I learned, uh, <laughs> I paid a huge price, but I learned how to create income without having to leave the house. I mastered wow. the internet. Wow. And I, la I mastered learning how to uh, not only create intellectual property, like books and 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 audios and various different you know pieces of information, uh, but I also learned probably, in my opinion, the most powerful economic modality ever invented, uh, and that's called affiliate marketing, because affiliate marketing was developed by uh, created by Jeff Bezos in 1996. He came out uh, with Amazon in 95, 96. He launched affiliate marketing where you could go and recommend a book. Uh, you right. would get a, a particular piece of code. Somebody would go and you would promote that. Somebody clicks on that link. It was resident for 30 days when somebody purchased that book or right. if they purchase anything in that shopping cart, Amazon sends you a check and it's usually between 4% to 18%. I think it's 4% for books and stuff like that, maybe 18% for electronics. So the, uh, the affiliate marketing game was invented and it made millionaires. It made six right. and seven figure players. Right. And so uh, I wanted to master that. I wanted to figure that out. I had wrote my first book in 2001, How to Make Millions When Thousands Have Been Laid Off. And I learned from interviewing all of these great, brilliant, uh, at that time, second frequency people. So Bob Proctor was in the book. Robert Allen is in the book. Les Brown is in the book. Brian Tracy is in the book. All these guys. All right. So, you know, so I, I, I learned this, this process. But in that, I'm going through all of this racial battle fatigue, all of this trauma. Why am I sabotaging myself? Why am I uh, choosing relationships that are harming me? What is this thing? I might be good over here, but I'll uh, do something over in another area of my life that Fs up the part that I'm trying to get right. And, and so, you know, I always say you don't uh, you run into what you are running away from. So right. when I was in my situation, I was running away after my parents died. My, my, my sister became my legal guardian. She was exceptionally abusive emotionally. Why? My father, when she was 19, hit her in the head with a hammer, split her head open, and she never liked men at all. Of course, now when he's dead and I'm in her life as a baby brother, 16 year difference, she sees me and sees my father. So now I am uh, the recipient of all of that hate uh, yeah, and right. anguish and pain and trauma, right. not knowing that language then, it just hurt. And being told that you ain't shit, you just like your father, you'll never right. be right. You're right. A dumb, stupid, ass, ignorant, illiterate mother, you know what? So, hearing this every day for literally hours, I would turn my music up so I could just drown her out. So, for years, I am trying to get out of this trauma with my guardian, with my sister, with my family member, and run smack dab into the worst relationship ever that I tried to make work. It did not work. It made it worse because I did not take care of and didn't know that I had the trauma of all of this other stuff. And so what you run from, you run into. So as I'm going and starting to interview and find ways to align and lead with these great minds like the like the Kiyosakis and the Susie Ormans and all of that. I'm learning this stuff, but it ain't working for me. Okay. Like, this this makes sense. Why? Why when I apply it, something else comes along to either distract me or I end up screwing it up somehow. When I got to the place to recognize what was happening to me and digital economics and the power of affiliate marketing, the concept of walk away wealth systems, to be able to uh, create an automated wealth building platform of intellectual property, whether it is my own or someone else's, what I had to do to become that was I had to first address my trauma. Because what I have learned from working with so many clients is I can teach them the tactical, practical aspect of digital nomics, but right. their trauma is speaking louder than their logic. It ain't gonna work for them. 
Wow. And so I now, this is why I became, I decided to get into metaphysics, uh, go back into metaphysics, but actually get a doctorate in it and go into it and connect it back to first frequency Dogonic understanding because metaphysics is a 1490 uh, 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 etymology word. It doesn't exist in Comet. It doesn't exist. Right. Right, right. So, so I want the family to understand that I'm coming from this. I'm not a Beckwith. I'm not a Yala Van Zant. I'm something completely different in the metaphysical space. But I'm understanding these principles, and I learn how to collapse time. In metaphysics, we call it cause and effect. The cause is the intention, the idea, the effect right. is the manifestation and the demonstration. Well, for us, we have been taught they stole our time when they stole us. We now have. Uh, 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 allowed ourselves to be put in a situation where we basically now have been just told, you know what, you ain't getting nothing. You get it when you die. Right. You don't, you, 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 you don't get anything while you're here on earth. You get it when you die. We go to school. We take a time to go and get school. So that takes time. Then we get a job, a J-O-B, just over broke. And then we don't get paid immediately for the work we do. We get paid every two weeks, depending upon right. your pay scale, two weeks and one, once a month in some cases. Then when we get the J-O-B, uh, we then have to go back and pay back for the education of the time that we took to get the education. And right. then there yeah. we got to have family. We got to have, you know, some type of social life. We got to have some type of lifestyle. And we're already feeling like we want more, need more, deserve more. And so now we're starting to debt. We're starting to overspend, overextend ourselves. And then we go into this perpetual loop. Uh, right. uh, trying to matter, trying to fit in, go along to get along. Maybe if I work a little harder, maybe if I take a second job, maybe if I do this, maybe, and we run out of time. I will be 55 this year. I'm exhausted. <laughs> okay. right. I'm, right. Racial battle fatigue has whooped my ass. I almost dropped dead on my 53rd birthday, had to go to the hospital, went there. They said, uh, 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 Reverend Matthews, you have blood, uh, blood clots in both lungs and both legs. If you hadn't have come in tonight, you wouldn't be here. Wow, wow. That was a buildup of toxicity of trauma over time. I had to learn how to master my time. I had to learn how to collapse my time to create income instantaneously and get out of the mindset that I had been trained to go get a job, to go and spend time and build it up over time. Now, when I was in my 20s, that might have worked. But at 50, when you're in your 50s, you got more days, uh, 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 less days in front than you have. Right, right, right. I ain't got 20 years to get a portfolio and let it grow. I don't have the ability to do. So how can I create income morally and ethically going back to those right. Right. Uh, three mm -hmm. promises? I don't want to sell drugs. I don't want right. to do drugs. I don't want to get involved in gang activity. Uh, I, I respect and love my family that are, are in gang, uh, that's gang related, gang affiliated, because I know ain't nothing wrong with you. Something happened to you. All of that is a trauma response. And it's all happening to us at various different levels. Okay. So, so affiliate marketing, when I started working with Professor Cabo Hiawatha Kamene, I, I, I came to him and I said, brother, I want to use you as an experiment. I want to teach you how to collapse your time. You've been working as a school teacher. Uh, I think he was just in the process of retiring when I got to work with him right. uh, for 30 some odd years. I want to help you buy back your time. I want to help you take your intellectual property, what you think, what you say, and what you do. Right, right. I want you to be able to sell it instantaneously to the world, not just to the few people that you might know on Facebook, but to the world. And I want you to get used to having streams of income coming in every hour on the hour, all throughout the day, every right. day. Right. We are not trained to think that way. We think right. that's a scam. In fact, the most that we can get to or the closest that we can get to in that line of thinking is network marketing. Uh-uh. Network marketing is not the way because guess what? You're still buying your time. You got to go back and go out and find a downline and go to your friends and family. When people, one of my clients said, Philippe, I was part of the NFL. I said, really, what does that mean? She says, it was part of the no friends and no family list. They don't call me no more when they see me coming. They treat me like a Jehovah's Witness because I didn't went to them with every damn network marketing. Uh, 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 right. 
process ever. Nobody's no, nobody's listening. I said, okay, sister, let me explain to you how affiliate marketing works and the power of this. All you have to do is share a link on Facebook or Twitter or whatever your social media uh, 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 proclivity is. And when they click on that link and make a purchase, you get an automatic check. Now, I... Uh, decided because of Amazon and what have you, you know, they make it a little difficult now for you to become an affiliate, even though it's free. I decided not to pay people what Amazon pays, which is 4%. I do 50-50 deals. If you promote any of my digital assets, it's, you get 50%, period, end of story, right? So that way it's clean because I'm under the law of Ma'at, the law of reciprocity. And right, so right. I understand that if you win, I win. What was that commercial back in the day? I, uh, 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 you know, I'm not just a hair club member. I'm also, I'm not the president. I'm also a client. Right. So, yeah, right. Uh -huh. right? right. <laughs> so, so affiliate marketing is our way out. And we have now in this COVID-19 situation, the ability to learn something that will change our lives for the rest of our lives. But more importantly, brother Chuck, it will allow us to collapse time. Right. Because right. they don't have time to go to school and learn something new. They don't have time to put something in and wait 20 years from now, 15 or even 10 years from now for it to accrue. We don't know if we're going to be here tomorrow when we start looking at the brother, you know, George Floyd and what have We don't know. We need a right. now. Right. We need right. a now and we need a how. And right. that, we got the hope, but we need more than that. We need a now and a how. And, and it's, it's, it's deep what you're talking about because – uh, to put it in simple terms, the affiliate marketing piece, um, for those who don't truly understand that, take a look at Walmart. Mm -hmm. Walmart is simply one large building with a whole bunch of products in it that other companies are just renting space on the shelf. You're going in and you're purchasing and Walmart is getting a piece of that. And also, whoever put the product there is going to piece of that. That's mm -hmm. what affiliated marketing simply is. It's yeah. just that right now you have the capability and the access online to do it without having any product. Absolutely. Because here's the thing. You are sharing stuff on Facebook 24-7. You're on Facebook and your social media now more than ever. Right. I think there's some crazy number where we spend at least three hours a day right. uh, on social media. We, we sharing cats and dogs and toothpicks and all kinds of uh, stuff. And I'm saying, well, if you're going you're gonna to share it any damn way, why don't you make some money doing it? Got it. Got All it. right. So so uh, can you do this with your cell phone? Can you do this with your laptop or tablet? Yes. That's why I, I, the, the subtitle of the book is Making Money With Your Cell Phone. It's, it's, it's how if, if you go to prison and you come out and how are you going to make money? How You can't get a job. You can't get housing. You're discriminated against. What are you going to do? Affiliate marketing is the way to do it. You find right. people. You find a product or service that of people who have an affiliate product, and I, I I have that, so I'm offering that to the family. You can go to walkawaywealthsystems.com, download all the information, uh, or you can go to uh, Digital Nomics Bootcamp uh, and fill out that form, and I'll work with you and teach you this process of how to get to the now and the how of affiliate marketing. There's a learning curve. To, there's two learning curves to affiliate marketing. The first learning curve is how adept are you at working a computer or your phone? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, are you, you know, do you have this fear of technology? Right? right. That's the first. The second is, and we have to do an assessment. How deep is your trauma? Got it. If your trauma is going to cause you to make you think that you can't make this happen. You can't do this. The ghosting trauma is telling you you're not good enough, not deserving of it. And so you're going to self-sabotage it. That is the two things. Those are the two things that we have to deal with, which is why I decided to go back into ministry to understand and pull that process out, because that's the missing link in a lot of the stuff that we're, a lot of this stuff works, man. You know that a lot. Well, of I know that you got out of somehow you got out of your own way, <laughs> started dealing with your own trauma, and yeah. then all of a sudden the stuff that you learn started to work. So now I have a quick question. Um, do you think that poverty is man-made? No, I don't think it's man-made. I know it is. Okay, <laughs> I just want to put it out there. Yeah, it out there. Uh, poverty is not a not. So I'm, I, everything that I do goes back to first frequency. It goes back to the consciousness before the conflict. The conflict happened when they came out of the mountains, and then we were in the consciousness after the conflict. 
before the conflict shows me and tells us there was no, no such thing as poverty. Right. We were able to manifest instantaneously whatever it is that we wanted. We were in a state of causation. You must be in a state of causation and you must have manifest, we must have manifested and, and, uh, and perfected manifestation because we built structures that still can't be duplicated and replicated today. Correct, correct. So where does poverty come from? Poverty comes from it is is it is man-made. And I would say that not only is it man-made, it is white man-made. We are not designed to go out, work for something for a minimal amount of money, wait two weeks to get it, try to pay our bills and try to have some semblance of family in doing so. Get to Saturday just to relax and have to turn it up and let it go to release some of that trauma. Then if you depend upon your level of faith system or to have you go to church on Sunday to try to relieve that trauma, dance around, shout hallelujah, and look at this white boy on a stick. I might be offending some people. I am so sorry, but you got to come out of that. And then now here we are Sunday. I got to go back and do this all over again. All that's over again, not right. That's not who we are. No, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Right, but right. what we should be doing is as I'm speaking to you right now, and I know you as you are speaking to me right now, we're earning income right now. Right. We're right. making money while we're talking. Correct. True story. Two stories, if I have time to tell it. The first story comes from, and I put this in my second book, Shockwell System. This was when I was hanging out. I was assimilated. This is when I was hanging out with Robert G. Allen, who wrote the book, uh, co-wrote One Minute Millionaire and No Money Down. He was driving his Rolls Royce in, in San Diego uh, and 60 miles an hour, smack dab into a tree. I think I told you this story on the phone. I'm not sure. I talked to somebody to tell somebody this story. And he was in a coma for four days. He woke up and he's telling me this story as, as I'm interviewing him. That He woke up and there were four doctors working on him. And the first thought that came to his mind is I'm earning more money coming out of a coma than these four doctors are right now working on me simultaneously. Right. Right. Man, that messed me up, dude. Right. I, I'm not going to lie. That that was a game changer for me. Fast forward. I start working with Professor Kaba, teaching him this process of how to collapse time using uh, doing affiliate marketing and digital nomics. He went to the dentist uh, uh, Saturday, Sunday. He wasn't feeling good from what maybe the, the anesthesia, Novocaine or whatever. He's laying up in bed and all of a sudden his son, Haru, burst into the uh, uh, bedroom and said, Dad, we just made uh, uh, $200 from one sale. Right. Mm -hmm. Kaba right. calls me up and says, brother, you remember you told me the story about Robert Allen waking up and making more money than the four doctors? Well, right. I didn't make as much money as those four doctors, but I realized I made money with the, while I was in my bed sleep. Right. That's who and what we are supposed to be doing. And that's how we're going to get to this next level. We must master our economics. We must learn how to engage in disruptive economics. Right. Because we're in a disruptive pattern and state. You can't work a, a, a traditional job out of the situation you're in. It's impossible. Uh, so... Um... One thing I like about the internet and one thing I love about the internet, uh, one of the things that I teach is because of the process of Wi-Fi and affiliate marketing, it doesn't care who you look like or what you look like. It doesn't matter. As long as you have a product that is out there that people are going to purchase. Right. Um, what we try to do is we try to take the excuses out of reasons for not creating wealth. Right. And when we do this, uh, people, as you said, the trauma, so I'm understanding it now, it's the trauma part that they have to deal with, right. knowing that you have the keys, the access, the logic to do it. But the question is, what is it that's stopping you from actually producing and doing the work that's like correct. you're supposed to? Because it's not going to hit you. It's not going to wake you up. It's not going to make you, um, it's not coming to you freely. There is some work involved in this whole process. Um, you have your own Affiliate marketing company. Uh, I have my own affiliate marketing products. I don't own the company. Right. Gumroad is the company, but in a sense, yeah, yeah I guess so. And what the type of products? I'm sorry. I what type of products? Assets. I sell digital products. All of my books. 
uh, I, mm-hmm. uh, comedic wisdom school that 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 uh, 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 we we have you know hundreds of students that 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 pay you know uh, fourteen dollars a month uh, to do. We have a affiliate marketing program for that. So all of my digital assets, all of my books, my four metaphysical frequencies framework. In fact, my spiritual nomics ujinomics book. Uh, is, a, is, a, is a book about affiliate marketing. We sell that and teach people how to make 50% from recommending that book and sharing that book. And so it's one of those things, man, where first of all, strangers, Les Brown taught me this years ago. He says, strangers will make you rich. It ain't the people you know, fam. It ain't, you know, if, if you have a supportive family, that's great, but they can only buy whatever you're selling one time. So right. as a result, you have to figure out that your Facebook right now might not be enough people. You want to become an influencer and you want to build a following of people who rock with you so that you have a constant pool of people to share this quality information with. That is how you develop walk away wealth because somewhere someone is clicking on the links that you're sharing right. and as a result they're purchasing and now you're automatically receiving an email saying you're getting you made 50% of whatever the product or digital asset is right now um what you're talking about is passive income absolutely okay but, that just that's <laughs> easy yeah, no, 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 and, no, and no, passive yeah. income is yeah. taxed at a lower rate than earned income mhm Okay, got. It. I just Absolutely. want you to. <laughs> yeah, Bob yeah. Parker taught me, he, and he also said, he says, you need as many of those passive income streams as you possibly can. Got it. Got it. So not Correct. just one, because again, that trauma makes us think, well, maybe I should just sell one item or right. one thing. Right. No, multiple streams uh, of 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 income coming in, and. There's a learning curve, you know, there's a learning curve for some of us and a financial uh, curve for some of us who can't invest in real estate, uh, can't invest in stock. We, 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 what, where, so what can you do immediately that can make you enough money to move into that space? Got it. Right. It's it's the buildup. It's the buildup. It's the buildup. One the of the build things that one of the things that I on Hoppy right. Talks, everybody who does all this stuff, every right. one of them is right. Right. They're the best of the best in the world, but everybody can't rock with it because it's like, what's the barrier to entry? Right. right. Got it. So there's a barrier of the finances. I might not have enough money to invest in this, but then there's the barrier of the trauma that can I really learn this, unlock this, and what do I do? What is the easiest, most efficacious route that I can take to start building that up? And that's not easy either. Affiliate marketing is not easy. There's no such right. thing. Right, it right. Work, but if you're tra- if you can understand these four traumas and understand, ain't nothing wrong with you. You're not dumb. You're not stupid. You're not uneducated. Something happened to you that is truncating and stopping that first frequency signal from manifesting as its natural self. Powerful, powerful. We talk about affiliate marketing and what um, people have to understand is that take a look at your higher education colleges, whatever. You have professors who are holding classes, but they're purchasing books. And every semester, you have to purchase that professor's book. And people don't understand that is affiliate marketing. Facts. Very simple. Yeah. Facts. So now I have to take this class that's a prerequisite or required for my profession. And I have to get make sure it's the third version or the fourth version or the fifth version. This is putting money back into the professor's pockets and into the schools. And again, this is all part of affiliate marketing. It's right. the way that the system is designed that we haven't been taught right. how to and see also, it for what it is. Have- wanted to teach uh, our scholars, our teachers, and our masters because their sh- Professor Small, Oba Deshaka, Linda Jeffries, right. uh, Kaba, uh, they all should be multimillionaires. Yes, the Dr. Clark. Not millionaires, Dr. multimillionaires. Dr. Ben. Dr. Ben, yes. Just Clark, all of yes. them. They should, especially Dr. Ben, he should not have died the way he did. Never should have happened. Got it. But. We, we are all dealing with our trauma in some shape, form, or fashion. And even some of the, the scholars that I'm working with, you know, they have trauma. 
They got PTSS. They got genetic trauma. They, we, even though they teach this and understand it, it's still applied to them. And so uh, Kaba tells me all the time, I was just with him last night. We worked twice, in, uh, twice uh, Tuesdays and Thursday nights. And he said, I've never made this kind of money before. I, I, right. I never even knew it was possible. Right. And I, uh, uh, for the first time in my life, I, didn't, I don't have to go into my retirement money to pay all of my bills. I've got enough money now. Uh, you know, I create, helped him create an additional five-figure income where he can sustain and start to build and grow. So the next level is taken to six figures, to six figures, to seven, and so on and so forth. This is something that we all must do. But in terms of our scholars, those are the people who have sacrificed the most for us. Correct. They yes. are our living, breathing ancestors. Yes. We need to up them, big up them. We need to give them the same amount of money, the same amount of support that we would give a Kevin Ross, I mean, a Kevin Hart, uh, uh, a Beyonce, right. uh, what, whatever the thing is. We need to do that for our own people, for our own teachers. I don't want to have to do fundraising so somebody can go to Africa. I want you to be able to just go and buy the damn thing. Got it. Correct. Yes. Got it. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Now, how can we get in contact with you to get started on the path of wealth building when it comes to affiliate marketing and walk away wealth system? So uh, walk away wealth systems .com, which is on there, the, the, the dot com. Uh, you'll get a, a download uh, of the uh, chapter, uh, the forward, actually that Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene wrote, uh, and then you'll be in our email uh, uh, process and you'll get information that will take you to uh, digitalbootcamp.com and digital, uh, excuse me, digitalnomicsbootcamp.com. Right. Don't go there because I don't know who those people are, but go to digitalnomicsbootcamp.com and there's a questionnaire that you can fill out. And by answering those questions, I can look and see who you are, where you're at, and if it is, uh, if it makes sense, I will hit you up and start to have a conversation with you because what I know about you and I know about the family, one, ain't nothing wrong with you. Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, two, something happened to you. Three, it's still happening to you. Four, you have a ghosting trauma that has sabotaged you and you are running out of time. And so you need to learn how to do something that will buy back your time. But you right. have to first have the spiritual understanding of how to collapse that time so that Got you it. can really live in time freedom. Got it. One of the things that I teach the youth is um, doubling their money. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I, I tell them this, uh, I want you to take $10 and learn how to double that. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you're going to learn some things and then take the 20 and learn how to double that. Mm -hmm. Each doubling gives you a different set of values and skills and understanding money. I will never ask a 17, 18 year old to double $2,000. They can't conceive it. They just right. can't. Right. There's a situation that I was brought to the table where someone had invested a certain amount of money that was sizable for a real estate investment. Mm -hmm. I was brought to the table at the end of it. They couldn't find the person that they gave the money to, to invest. Mm. So they asked me, what can they do? And I said, your first mistake was you did not have me at the table at the <laughs> initial onset because I know what to ask and I know what to get to make sure that this investment is protected. Mm -hmm. They lost their money. There was nothing we can do. They're mm -hmm. still looking for the brother. Mm -hmm. Sad to say it was a brother who did it to them. Mm -hmm. But again, what we're looking at is people are investing in opportunities and they don't understand the opportunities. Right. And this is why something of your program, the initial part is understanding that the building of the financial muscle, the mental muscle, knowing what to ask, knowing how to ask, saying that, OK, and the, like we, we talked about this earlier, people don't want to seem stupid. That's right. That's what we, we talked about that earlier. And, Right. right. We talked right. about that earlier. Yeah. Uh -huh. I already feel stupid. I don't want to look stupid and confirm it. Yeah, now, you know, right. so I'm just going to lay back in the cut and maybe uh, sabotage you to say I knew it wasn't going to work. And, right. and Powerful. Yes. that's it. Powerful. The crab in a barrel theory. 
Awesome, yes. awesome. Yeah, yeah I knew awesome. That work when I got in it, and then you go to get philosophical. I told you that wasn't going to work. I told you they was a scam. I told you, I told you, I told you. And <laughs> I'm like, family, we've got to get out of our own way. But I also have to say this, fam. We know that we need to get out of the way of uh, the second frequency I move, the European. But some of us need to get out of our family's way. Yeah our friends way correct correct because they are in a third and fourth frequency a false racial construct identity and they bat shit crazy and they don't want you to have anything they suffer from white rage just like white people suffer from white rage right. so when you start going up and growing up they're going to come in and try to sabotage you and hold you down and hold you back by telling you you ain't nothing and some of them will try to kill you if you don't believe me ask nipsey hustle Right. I, I appreciate your work, brother, because uh, one of my idols is Booker T. Mm. And when he was down doing the work, when he was, when Tuskegee was making bricks and those communities were coming, purchasing bricks, he was building the schools. He was building. Um, my issue with some of those people at the time when they were going through the school, part of the object and part of the project was they were supposed to take their skills and go back home to their own communities right. and teach their communities. They right. forgot that. Right. And this is why I appreciate um, brothers and sisters like you knowing that um, we didn't make it on our own. Right. So now we're coming back and we're showing you, listen, this that, is what you have to do. Now, perfect. what are you gonna do? Absolutely. Are you gonna do it or not? Absolutely. Yes. Because here's the thing, brother. I know I'm not, I am uh, not special. I know I am highly qualified and I know that we're all actually special and I know that we're all equal. Why? The same creator that created you created me. Right. Now, if anybody who is listening uh, or watching uh, anything that you and I have said and it makes sense to them, that means it's already in you. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to understand it from us. So there's right. nothing right. special. We're right. just talking about something that you already know. You intuitively know that this is truth. Truth recognizes itself. You might not be able to put it into words or articulate it, but right. you know that you know that you know. And so we are incredibly gifted people if we just got out of our own way and dealt with our trauma. Right. And it would be an end game. It would be an end game. What financial advice would you give to everyone listening right now? something that they can take tonight and start on? Uh, go to gumroad.com and uh, get a free account. Go and, to? And learn, uh, uh, I'm sorry? Go to who? Gumroad. So I use a platform called Gumroad to do okay. all of my economic e-commerce and everything. I, I, I talked to the, uh, I, I'm friends with the president who wrote the code. He was the guy who wrote the code for Pinterest. Uh, he wanted to become a billionaire. It didn't work out for him. So he developed the gum road, became a multimillionaire. But it, as a result, uh, he developed a platform that I believe all, all people should use. And it's the easiest platform to use to learn how to have a, 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 a your own affiliate marketing platform. So if you wanna sell your own products and not just digital products, you wanna sell merch, you can sell merch and you can set up an affiliate product where somebody can recommend your merch and that uh, person clicks on the link, they buy the merch and then you ship it out if you wanna do the physical route. I do the digital route because I don't want to have to go to the post office and be around white people. Got it. So Got it. Got that's it. how this works. So you go to gumroad.com and get you a free account. Or if you want to do affiliate marketing with uh, Amazon, it's free. Go right. when you go to Amazon, scroll down to the bottom where that blue uh, patch is, and it will say become an affiliate. And it's free. Sign up, become an affiliate and read all of the information of what it does and what it takes. That's the other thing. You've got to absorb that new information in order to acquire something you've never had. You must become someone you've never been. Got it. Got it. Got it. One of the things when we talk about Wi-Fi and the computer is I actually teach Forex. Mm, OK. OK. And I tell students that you can make three four hundred dollars waking up two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and if you understand how to read the charts 
and how to make the actual inputs and outputs, you can make some serious cash and go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. This is another way of building wealth and understanding Absolutely. that um, it's, it's possible. What I find that there are a lot of doors that were closed to us mm -hmm. that are starting to come open to us. Mm -hmm. But again, according to what you're saying is the trauma of the non-belief mm -hmm. and not being and worthy of- Continuous failure. The more you fail, the more you learn how to be helpless. That's where the term learn helplessness comes in. Got it, powerful, powerful. You understand? Powerful. So we are yes. learning how to be helpless and so therefore we do nothing and we become sheep. And this is why we don't take action on our own lives. So in other words, here you go, I'm giving it to you. You don't have to work for it. That's right. So now you become complacent. That's right. Every single month, I'm going to give it to you. You don't have to work for it. Right. But what I look at is I always ask the question, what happens if that source of income is not there? What right. do you do? Right. So I'm always teaching that you're always getting prepped and you're building wealth. Right. This is what it's and all about. Stedman Graham, I meant to tell you, he's in my first book. He's, he was also in my first book, but Stedman Graham took me, uh, I had a dot com back in 98 and he would bring me, I had an uh, e-zine and because I was interviewing all these people. So I had an electronic magazine, an e-zine or blog, what's right. called mm -hmm. day. <clears throat> And he would invite me up to uh, uh, NBC Towers where his office was. And it's the same concept I told Cabo. And he said, never leave any money on the table for leave. Correct. And so for the family, you need to do digital nomics. You need to do affiliate marketing. You need to do Forex. You need to do real estate. You need to do you need to do everything that is available to you and possible for you to do. And right. that's the end of the story. You need multiple streams and sources, not one. And use your if you have a job, use your job source income to pay for the education to create your multiple sourced income. What I look at is there are a lot of people that are in corporate America who have skills that can be transferred over to themselves, for themselves, to create a second flow of income. Facts. Hell, drug dealers, for that matter. <laughs> yeah. Counting. I mean, I'm just saying, my street pharmaceutical people. Uh, you got this. If you are, if you are alive, you have learned how to survive. You have something in you that uh, no other human being has that level of resilience. Right. Correct. You you, Correct. you you just have it. You just think that it's not valuable. It is. Correct. It's currency. Got it. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is currency. Inter the intellectual property piece. There was a situation that happened here in New York where a young lady went to a college and she designed a, a bag mm. and she won the contest and she got the prize, whatever it was. Uh, about six months later, seven months later, she was in a store and she saw her bag. Yeah. She tried to sue, but she could not sue because the bag was designed at the school and of course, she signed over all her rights, not understanding the intellectual property piece. So again, these are things that we have to understand. What's yours is yours, what you create. I used to work in corporate America and they would ask me why I was so successful and what I shared. I'm like, no, I'm not. Right. Be why? Because this is mine. This is what I do. So right. you want me to help other managers become successful mm, right. based on what right. I've designed and what I've developed. It's not going to happen, intellectual right. property. It's knowing your value, knowing who you are, knowing what it is, what's important. Absolutely. Yes, very, very true. Um, what What do you think? Um, what do you think is the number one downfall of the success of African people in America when it comes to money? And I know you talked about the, the metaphysical part. Uh, say it again now, my brother. What is the number one thing that you think is the downfall of African people when it comes to wealth in the United States or worldwide? Well, it's be it, it, that they don't, they are becoming wealthy based upon and living in a false racial construct. And so it's killing them. Wow. Powerful. There's a price to pay for becoming a millionaire or multimillionaire in America, particularly Africa as well, but particularly yes. here. This yes. is peer-reviewed research. This is not my opinion. This right. is something that 
when, when, when I did a piece on Gail and Oprah, uh, you know, I got some pushback from some per, some people in the community because I'm coming from a scientific understanding that when you uh, are that go along, get along Negro, now you are forced to be around them 24 seven. Right, right. Now, right. It, now, so in my work, I look at what's called verticals and horizontals, right? So I looked at the vertical, a vertical, uh, is what's known as a niche. Right. I looked mm -hmm. at the vertical of African American and African. Okay, that's a vertical. But then I looked at uh, how wide does that vertical go? Well, there's billions of Africans and African Americans. So there's a lot of money to be made just in our own community. Yes. Then yes. I said, well, I know that I need to narrow the vertical because if I do a shotgun approach and try to get everybody, that that's not going to work. So now I'm going to narrow the vertical and I'm just going to concentrate on uh, metaphysical, comedic, uh, uh, pan-African, uh, African and African-American people. So now I have a micro niche. Now go down and how wide does that go? How many millions of people think the way I think? Uh, feel the way that I feel. Well, there's millions. So therefore, there's enough money for me to be able to sustain or, right. or, or and or create a lifestyle. So now I am able to create a level of lifestyle where I don't have to be around uh, the second frequency people. Got I it. can just be exclusively around my people got and it. still be healed. Now, I still got to deal with my crazy ass people, right. but it. it's my people. You know what I'm saying? It's my family. As opposed to uh, I can uh, uh, do something where I have to now be inclusive and make right. white people feel good and safe. I don't want to make white people feel good and safe, Chuck. I don't right. want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to have a non-denominational ministry where I have a bunch of white people in there uh, practicing whiteness, practicing racism, harming me and harming my people, but I have to go along and get along and make them feel good. I don't want to do that. I just want to deal with my people and my people only. And right. there's enough of us for me and for us to be able to do that. So that's the downfall of black folks when they get successful. They are locked into something that they cannot get out of without right. damaging the money that they have made. Powerful. You're talking about professional athletes, correct? <laughs> you think? Right. Come on now. Get mad right there. Come on, man. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's anybody who who, who is, um, you know, I hate to say this, but, you know, the term own. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Got it. It's, it's okay. just there. Yeah. Just look it, at it. It's just there. And you're absolutely right, because when I was part of corporate America, um, managing departments, we would have these meetings. And when they were talking about cutting numbers and putting numbers on the board, and I'm looking at these numbers and I'm going like, well, each number that you want me to cut is a body, is a person that I have to go back and I have to figure out how do I cut my staff from 25 down to 22? Wait a minute, that's three people that three parties that you know nothing about, but according to them, it's just numbers. And I got out because it was sucking my soul. Right. That's absolutely Corporate right. America was sucking my soul. They wanted me to do things that was unethical to my spirit. And right. I was drinking more. Yep. I was, again, I was depressed more. So I understand when it comes to the trauma, I didn't understand it now. I got it. I right. wasn't supposed to be in that situation at all. Yeah. That's the got price to pay though. That's got the rate of battle fatigue. Got it. Understandable. Yeah. Okay. We got a question. Okay. Um, okay. What are what are the best tips to building a massive social following presence? Uh, so it's multiplicable. Um, what? So if you're on Twitter, if you're on uh, Facebook, the way the game works. You go to somebody who has, you know, um, a, a million Twitter followers, an influencer, and you start following the people that are following them. Got it. Got because it. you want to be, if it depending upon you, you want to find somebody that has a similar niche or market that you're into. 
that's complimenting to you. And so if somebody uh, is an influencer that 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 sells pur uh, purses or whatever, then you want to go to that top influencer and you want to befriend. If you're on Facebook, you want to befriend as many of their friends as right. possible to begin dealing with building up. Uh, a, a large social following. I do believe in PPC pay per click, but at a certain point, I, I don't do PPC as of yet because I've been able to build what I built organically because I know exactly what the family needs and how to source and serve them. So my game is I go to the top most brilliant minds in the world. I interview them. Their intellectual property is then shared to the family. We have a product that we create that moves the family forward, the, the scholar or the guest of the show gets 50%, I get 50%, and the uh, uh, the audience gets the great piece of information and the great scholar. So that's how I have monetized all of my relationships in building that platform. Wow, powerful, powerful. Um, what, what I'm looking at is um, an opportunity here, especially in this COVID situation where you can actually create an income and a wealth base now if you truly understand how to come out of this. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at is opportunities and ways of understanding that. Um, I did a workshop yesterday and I explained to people that if you have a skill in tutoring or teaching, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. So if you have that skill, there are companies out there that will pay you a minimum of $22 mm -hmm. to share your skill. Mm -hmm. I have a very good friend of mine yeah, who speaks or, Mandarin. Uh, you could do uh, what's called micro outsourcing. You can go to Upwork.com uh, and become uh, uh, someone that uh, companies like myself, you know, mm -hmm. I have a, a, VA, a VA, a virtual assistant out in the Philippines that does all of my posting and all of my stuff because uh, I don't have time to run all of that. So I can go and find writers. I can find people who do design. I could do all. So if you have these skill sets and core competencies, not to necessarily buy yourself another job, but something that you can do in the, in the interim, you can go to like Upwork.com, fill out the application, become a uh, 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 an outsourcer and uh, people will hire you and pay you, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars an right. hour from right. any part of the world for your particular service, for your particular right. understanding of what you do. What I look at is what value do you bring to the table for yourself? Right. And that's key for yourself. Right. I feel that you have to become selfish and understanding that you're moving forward for yourself, your family, so that generationally, every generation is supposed to be better than the one prior. Mm -hmm. So the question is, when it's said and done, mm -hmm. what did you bring to us as a family for us to move forward? Um, it, it's, it's powerful when you look at situations and you look at the generations before and the work that they've done, the sacrifices mm -hmm. that they've done. Again, mm -hmm. we talked about Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark, the sacrifices that they've done so that we can be where we are now. So right. just imagine how, if we pass the baton, because that's what we have to do, pass right. the baton to right. make sure that, okay, you go, you're ready. And, and it's the preparation part, right. very preparation part. Yes. I, I mean, I mean, I love it, I love it. Um, so now, a mm -hmm. lot of college mm -hmm. students are coming out. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for them? Well, that's, they, that's exciting because that's the future, <laughs> right? They're not running out of time like my black ass, okay? So, yes. <laughs> so that's a different conversation. So, so for the college students, now I'm going to tell you to invest. I'm going to tell you to uh, make money and put some of that away so it accrues and so you can take full advantage of it by the time right. you are my age that right. you deal with your trauma. Right. You're going to go through some trauma, but you are at an age where there's a little bit less trauma and less memory of that trauma. And so right. you can take full advantage. Uh, but learn affiliate marketing because it is the future of the way wealth is going to be made in this country and got in it. the world. Got it. Got it. COVID-19 taught us that uh, there's a thing called the Internet. And yes. that there is this thing where uh, 
oh, I can't transfer my skills. You know, everybody, oh, I could do uh, brick and mortar businesses. Oh, I can't do my business online. You, you freaking learned how, didn't you? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes. Oh, I'm not good at computers. I don't know how to do video conferencing. You, you, you learned, didn't you? Yes. Correct. So this is not going away and not changing because there are businesses who aren't coming back, not necessarily because they lost so much money, but for the fact they realize they can do it virtually. Correct. Correct. So uh, my nephew. Skill. Yeah. So learn right. the skill. My and, nephew. And figure out how to master this environment. My nephew Make was telling me. Money. My nephew was telling me a story. He designs T-shirts. He has his own line, and mm -hmm. he does the swap meets down in Atlanta. And because of COVID, he's getting more sales online yeah. than ever before. And if it were not for COVID, he would not have to adapt to that situation. Right. They, they, we have right. to think. We have to think outside the box. Um, mm -hmm. We have a question from Andre. Andre asks, "Has you ever had someone that couldn't make money?" Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's just absolutely. Everybody is, you know, uh, as they say, everybody wants to uh, uh, get to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Uh, so there are people who have so much trauma that I can't save them. I can't help them. Right. Uh, and right. that that hurt. That's the part, my French. That's the shit that hurts. Right. 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 There are family members I have that I cannot. I cannot help them. Uh, the trauma imprint is so strong. They're self-sabotaging uh, um, uh, the way they, they they they're so toxic. They 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 can't they can't move forward. And so right. yeah, they're gone. They're gone. That, you know, I'm not going to lie and say, oh yeah, well everybody I have worked with is no right. no no no. And that's why I decided to go back and look at this thing because and I'm you know looking at myself and using myself as an experiment. There are millions of us that know some of this stuff. But why ain't it working for us like it works for the other folk? Right. And so I had to take a deep dive into understanding the psychology of this, the emotion of this, understanding that there is something that is very unique to African and African-Americans that don't apply to the second frequency I move. They don't right. have the trauma imprint that we have. They right. just right. have uh maybe some competition within their ecosystem but they don't have our trauma right right okay right, right. And, and so man i i have heard this shit so, part my part of my friends this story so many times oh you know i was a college student and i just didn't like being a college student and so i borrowed twenty five hundred dollars from my family and i launched my own business we don't have that Right, correct. $2,500 to launch our own damn business. Right. We don't have that. So they have, and that's a that's stress for them. Right. That's a big deal. Like, oh my God, I have to figure out how to get $2,500 and borrow it from my family. Oh, wow. I wish I had your damn problem. Right, so we, right. So there are certain things that are unique to us that has caused this toxic shame. We don't want to talk about it publicly. Hell, we don't want to talk about it privately. It hurts. It hurts <laughs> you learn how to fail. It right. hurts when you learn how to fail and be helpless, bro. That shit right. hurts. And we right. don't want to deal with that. And so that creates all of this toxic buildup. And so when we, we blow this trauma and blow our trauma through each other, uh, we start tearing each other down. We start becoming cynical. We start canceling each other out. All of that, all of that is nothing more than trauma, trying to get out of the body. We're trying to heal. We're trying to get to the promised land. Right, We're trying right. to get back to first frequency. But, you know, metaphorically and literally, these efforts, these second frequency efforts got their knee and boots on our neck. But right. it's psychological, not right. just physical. Right. Um, every successful person that I've mentored up under, one of the key reasons why they admired me was because I never asked them for the end product. I asked them to teach me the process. Right. If your process is correct, I will get that end product, but I don't, I'm not able to get it unless I go through the process of transformation. That is brilliant. Yes. What you just said was brilliant. Yes. It's, 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 I can, so, so part of our trauma is we have be learned we've learned how to beg for what we want and pay for what we need. 
Right. We are waiting for somebody to come save us. Got it. Yes. And solve all of our problems as opposed to teach us how to do that. Got it. Say and sequence our way out of the situation that we're in. Remember earlier, I talked about that part of the brain that breaks down and we're right. no longer able to be in our logical center uh, and to lo logically and sequentially think our way out. So, yo, brother man, let me get 20 from you. Yo, brother right. man, can you help me out on the, on the light bill. Right. Mm -hmm. We will beg and ask as opposed to figuring it out. And that's what I love about what you just said. Right. I want to learn the process. I'll get the Got result it. on my own. And then they want to make you feel bad when you don't contribute. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, uh, you ain't for your people. You ain't uh -huh. for you ain't for your people. You ain't real, brother. You ain't keeping you ain't down. You ain't keeping it real. Yeah, uh, you know, you know you got it. Yeah, I, right, yeah, right. I do have it. Yeah, I do have it. <laughs> I do have it. And it's mine. <laughs> I do have it. That's right. That's right. Okay. Uh remember everyone, um, make sure you share, like, um, make sure you subscribe, Instagram, YouTube, make sure that you are connected with us. Elena has a question, okay? She asks, how much money should you spend saving investing percentage-wise? I have absolutely no idea because it's relative depending upon your age and how much money you have and how much time you have left. Risk factor, yes. Yes. So you would be the one to answer that question more so than myself. So let me let me answer that in my uh, format is, for instance, me, at my age, no children, I don't have the things that are, that have to pay attention to financially. Mm -hmm. So my risk factor, I can invest and I can take a larger risk than someone who has a family, who mm -hmm. has maybe a child or two children who has a wife. And uh, people ask me, well, what will I do? I'm like, I'm telling you what I do is not what you should do. Right. Because if I blow two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500, I can come back from that real quick mm -hmm. because I don't have the necessities to pay for on a monthly basis. Right. Got it. And I, I guess maybe I'm blessed. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, but yes, but we also, what, one of the things that we teach in Team Success, we teach financial literacy. One of the things we teach is you have to pay yourself first. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we teach is 20% is yours. You should keep that. That's right. No one should get that. You work 40 hours a week, 80 hours a week. 20% is yours. That's yours. It shouldn't go in the bank. At all, I don't believe in trust in banks. I know that banks are used for processings, but when it comes to saving money, um, no, your money should be somewhere where you can touch because there's going to be an opportunity where you're going to need that quick pass, right? So now, imagine if the bank shut down right now today and pre-COVID, people are going to be pissed off. And quite as it's kept, there were a lot of wealthy people who were taking money out of the bank because they knew that having it with them on their body, on their personage was better than going to the bank and the bank telling them, no, we're not going to give it to you. That's absolutely and That's key. So that's remember 20%. And I would say start with um, a small investments, a uh, Robinhood account, real small, open up by take 20, 40 bucks, open something up, uh, but build. See, here's the thing. What you have to do is you have to learn the craft and the trade. Mm -hmm. Don't invest $200 $2,000 and something that you don't believe in and you don't know anything about. I would rather you lose 20 bucks saying to yourself, okay, I learned that mistake. That's a $20 mistake. Now I can come back. I can still come back and recoup and right. make that money back, which is very, which is right. very key. Yes. Um, next week we are going to have on happy talks, assemblyman Charles Barron. So make sure you check in. Make sure um, you sign up because that's going to be a powerful piece right there. Okay, one question, uh, Michelle, because we're about to close up. Michelle asks, can the program be used for just the trauma portion alone? <laughs> that's deep. Or do you have to use both? That's <laughs> deep. That's a good question. I like that one, Michelle. <laughs> Yes. Damn, Michelle, you 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 got a brother <laughs> messed up over here. You know, oh my gosh. That you know, I never even thought about that. Uh, there you go, powerful, powerful question. Yeah, um, you know what? 
hit me up and I'll make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, said, okay, I need to do both because this, there's, but yeah, maybe we should just work on, uh, on, on the, tra- on the trauma part and maybe the digital knowledge part will come later. So, so thank you for that. You just created a whole nother thing. See, there you All go. Right. See that. That's what, that's what happens when you tune in on a oh, Friday man. night. <laughs> when two more gather together. <laughs> okay. okay. I, have, I have a question from Teoma. How long does it take to make money using affiliate marketing? Good question. So it depends on how quickly you can one find a good affiliate marketing product. But the real the, the real deal is how quick can you build your your database? How big can you build your mailing, your following, your social following? Because it's about numbers. It's about people. It's not about the two or three hundred people that's currently on your Facebook. It's about attracting all new people. Uh, right. and, 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 you know, you, where you have a deeper pool of thousands of people. So it, it, it if the first thing is trap, well, traffic generation is building up that following, building up those right. people who are following and liking it. So, like I said, you get a page, you have a page about wallets, you go and find and search and find the top people who are selling wallets, promoting wallets, and you right. go to their social media and you like and follow and friend and befriend the people that are liking and following them. You have information on your page that should be different, uh, but in the same niche uh, as their wallet. And now you start to build up a database. Then you launch your affiliate product, put it out there, source and serve it to the to that community, and boom. So it depends on how quickly you can uh, develop uh, an audience. I would rather have 10% of 1,000 as opposed to 10% of 100. Exactly. You're expanding your your umbrella. You're expanding. We think small. We say, okay, I'm just going to work with the people that are already I'm friends with on Facebook. No. Strangers make you rich, not the people you know. Powerful, powerful. Strangers make you rich, not the people you know. Powerful, powerful piece. Okay. Um, We're going to close out in about the next five minutes. I want to give the, the powerful presenter, Brother Philip Matthews. The last word I want you to close out for us. So please remember, subscribe, share, like, make sure you stay connected so that all these um, powerful pieces that are coming up. And we, um, with the Happy Family, we are setting up and we're lining up some powerful presenters for you so that you can get on a weekly basis some powerful content uh, post-COVID, even after COVID, so that we can say to ourselves, okay, great. We got the tools. Now, let's go ahead. Let's get it started. Next Thursday, happy talks with New York Assembly, Baron, Charles Barron said that. Okay, fine, but I'm going to let you go. And brother Philip, let me explain something to you. My brother from another mother, (laughs) we're going to talk offline because you said some powerful pieces and we're going to talk and we're going to share. So it's going to be East Coast, West Coast. So we're going to be slinging it and having a whole conversation. Cool. All right. right. And um, I want to say to Tacky family, Tacky, Felicia, Elena, Dion, Tammy, Rock, Dow, Tahuti Films, Kim Simon. Shout outs to the whole Tappy family. Um, Everybody that's been involved with us, we thank you for coming out. We thank you for listening. Um, so um, go ahead, brother. Go ahead, close us out. Tell us what so, you want us to know. There is an affirmation that I developed with power that I say every day and throughout the day that grounds me in my first frequency and helps me begin to exorcise and excavate my trauma out of me. It goes like this. I am one with first frequency. I am one with the first thought idea. I am one with the firstborn people. I am one with the only one. Ashe, and so it is. I say Zola, Zola, Zola. Peace. Hotel, brother. Thank you very much. Hotel. Thank you. Thank you.